Welcome to Jazz Syria, the show where we talk about life realities from our own personal experiences. I am Oluchi Einobong and the show is just getting started. Welcome, my name is Omotunde Adebuali David. Of course, beautiful women are going to be discussing very important topics today, so don't miss the show. Stay with us. And welcome, my name is Sheila OJ and let's have some fun. Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the new Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central. Africa first. Welcome back to Jess Siri. Now remember today is all about matchmaking and we have a guest who has been in the matchmaking scene for over seven years. Now she studied economics from Howard University in DC, United States of America. Help me with welcome, Didi Eddie. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. So now I was just saying economics, matchmaking, how? <laughs> <laughs> economics is more like you are. You know, you go to school, study, it's like your meal ticket, you know, get a job. And matchmaking has always been like a passion. So. Oh, nice. I like that. All right. I'll just go straight into it. I know matchmaking is very popular out of the country, America, Europe, every other place, but Nigeria, because our terrain is different. Culture, idiosyncrasies, you know, so many things surrounding so many of the things that we think about matchmaking. So how is matchmaking for you in Nigeria successful or hard? At first, it was really difficult because, you know, it's not something that's just widely accepted in Nigeria, even though our parents have been doing it in the past. Yeah. But it's different <laughs> when your parents are saying, you know, come and meet this person. And it's different when you want to go and look for someone on your own. So we came up with the privacy focus so that you don't have to you know, you can put yourself out there without putting yourself out oh, there, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. So it's become more accepted now because, you know, these times everyone is outsourcing everything. You go mm -hmm. to the gym, you can work out by yourself, but you get a trainer to help you work out, you know. You come back late from work, so you get someone that cleans. You outsource your cleaning, you outsource your fitness lifestyle, so you outsource your social life as well because not everyone has time afterwards to go for social events and meet people, so you outsource it to us. Yeah. So it's basically outsourcing your dating as well, well in a way. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with that, just so you know. No, no problems whatsoever. So now my question is, Nigerians, do they like paying mm. to that's be matched? So, that's so, such a Nigerian question. No, so, no the, reason I ask, the reason I ask that is because a lot of times when you meet like young men, especially the men, they're, they're always like, ah, women date. You know, yeah. they can they can meet people at any time. Mm -hmm. So there's this concept of having to pay to meet people. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to understand how that works for like, you know, for matchmaking. Like are people are people always skeptical about having to pay for that? Do they feel like they don't have to? Like what what is the challenge that you face with, with that? Um, I think with every business you have to have a client base, your focus. Mm -hmm. And our clients, I think, understand that, you know, it's an important thing. We have the free membership as well, okay. but we also have the paid members. And those mm -hmm. were the initial focus of our clients. You know, they are educated, they understand what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So they're not the um, the people that come and say, oh, there are ladies on the road or there are men. Can meet anybody. <laughs> they're not that, you know. It's not easy to meet a good woman. Some men understand that. Oh. They know it's not easy to meet a good man too. Okay. So if they have to like work towards it and then put some effort into it and be intentional about it and they have to make payments, they're not against that. So our clients is focused on that group, you know, okay. the group that's educated about this, you know, because you find the other group that everything just wants to be free. And free? we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. come on, this thing. But <laughs> to be honest, those, those groups, you know, they'll be better matched with themselves as well, too. Right. right. Yeah. It's just right. like that, someone that saying, mm, yeah. 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 Expose yeah. people like us. Because it's not hard to find a husband. I mean, you can go out today and 
You find husband. somebody. So, yeah. Mm. Go on the street and say, I'm looking for a husband. I promise you, you. Uh, <laughs> just that, would you want that person? <laughs> but this, you know, I mean, that's, despite this, the exposure that a lot mm-hmm. of us have, and a lot of people have, some people still prefer the traditional means, mm-hmm. which is the one of our parents matchmaking. I mean, I know people overseas, when they want to get married, they go back to their family, go and look for this person for me, go and find out and do this investigation. The acceptance mm-hmm. of matchmaking, how has it been in Africa? Um, for, funny enough, a lot of times we have parents calling for themselves, for their kids. And wow. Yeah, a lot of times parents <laughs> outside the country. That answers that your question, right? My parents are now involved, are now so involved. forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So a lady called about um, her kids and she was like, she made the mistake after moving to make sure they didn't socialize with Nigerians. And now that at the age she wants them to get married, they don't know Nigerians and she wants them to get married to Nigerians. Mm. So she called really concerned for them, you know, and it's difficult trying to convince your kids that are not, you know, that you want Nigerian. them to get married to Nigeria and they are not for it. So, um, so sometimes parents call, sometimes the people call. Notice that it's much more easier when people come from word of mouth. So we find that when a couple gets married and they tell their friends like, oh, we got married with Lagos Matchmaker, the sign up is usually easier. Yeah. And usually we have the same group of people. I agree. Word of mouth is always the best form of adverts, no matter what. But you know what? We'll be going on a quick break. When we come back, we'll still have more on Jassiri. Jazz Siri, and today is all about matchmaking. We have the matchmaker Lagos Didi Edit with us today, and we're all talking about matchmaking. I know to us it sounds like uh, it is a foreign like, concept, seriously, <laughs> truly that, but yes, a lot of people do matchmaking in Nigeria. Okay, so I know that you, you're telling us about matchmaking and how parents, as in, I'm, I'm even surprised, parents reach out to you to ma- matchmake their children, Sheila. Uh, why are you not surprised at this? I mean, <laughs> parents are getting desperate, I guess. Oh. <laughs> they want grandchildren so far. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I, I really like that parents are becoming like, you know, more enlightened about things like that and they're open to, to matchmaking. So which brings me to my question. So how exactly do you, um, you know, I would, would I say profile or how exactly do you, um, matchmake, um, people for instance? Okay, so when a person comes, they mm-hmm. tell you what they want. So we try to listen and just let you know and say, okay, do you know what? Tell us what you want. And we watch, you know, what you describe, you know, how you want. Do you describe more on the physical attributes or more on the characteristics? So we listen for things like that. And then we advise based on that. When people choose based on the physical, mm-hmm. we advise that, you know, when you're trying to choose a partner, it's hard, but don't focus too much on the things that can change. So if you're saying, okay. I want someone that's really skinny, what if she gets yeah. big? Would you? Mm-hmm. Would that be an end of relationship? I just like the sound of that. <laughs> or I want someone that's really pretty. If she has an accident, you know what happens. So we try to tell people not to focus on the physical. Mm. I mean, I'm sure you've seen celebrities like in the past that looked horrible, and now when money enters, you look yeah. different. You just shape, you shape yourself. Focus on the physical. It's not. You know, it might not be that long lasting. So focusing on the characteristics mm-hmm. is better if you focus on meeting a kind person, someone mm-hmm. that's generous, mm-hmm. um, you know, the school they went to, their background, those things don't change. So we try okay. to get you towards them. Wow. All right. I want to even ask this particular question. Because when it comes to anything like um there's always a like a demography. So tell me, who are your biggest clients? Is it women? Is it men? And why any of them? Our biggest clients are women. 
Oh, mm. but the are highest pain clients are men. men? <laughs> or is so it about this thing that the is... highest pain clients are men? Oh, but the highest the... pain clients are, are men. men. Yeah, but, but your biggest clients are women. Are women. Is it the indices of men are more than women? Is that thing really a thing? That men are more than women? I think men are really. I know women on. are more than men. You know, in so the single... we now have to like have one man to three. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> I think men are really focused on money making, you know, because we have a friendship group as well. And you know, in our friendship group, we notice a lot of men went towards the business sector. Women went for other things. Women are very emotional. They want to do other things. Men are just like chasing money. A lot of them will say, if you don't have money, you can't have a girl. So they mostly focus on that. Why you see the women, you know, come in with their list of what they want. And women are more, they, mo they have like a list list. Men mm. don't usually have that list list. Oh. Men are usually like, you know, I want someone that's pretty, hardworking, you know, three, four things. But women, huh. the list would be like 20, <laughs> 20 things, like the perfect, Please. to build the perfect human being. Yeah. So women are very particular. So they're like, I want this exact thing. So if I can't find it out there, I'll go to an agency where I can find it. Mm -hmm. So it makes more sense that women are more... I mean, there's this, there's this adage or this myth that says that the older a woman gets, the lesser her list is. Oh, but no. I don't know. No, no. No. Really? Mm -hmm. um, not in like this I, generation. No, just, women no, are no, more no, certain. Uh, uh, Do you think the older women oh, get, the experience. more difficult? Oh, so, yeah. so, sometimes. I don't know if they got more difficult. I just met them now. <laughs> 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 or maybe they've always been that difficult. I don't know. But they're just not wavering. Like, no matter what you tell them, they're like, no. This 15 things is all I want. I'm <laughs> Ladies, Matrika, would you so, say you've had disastrous? Because I know, no matter how smooth talking this is, have you ever had a match that was made from hell mm. and it felt like heaven initially? Mm -mm. Hmm. 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 No, because we wouldn't even really know because when we, our job stops at the matchmaking. Once oh. you're together, it's like, okay. Okay, we're done. So in the past, we've had couples call when they've gotten married and they're having marital issues. And we're like, no, this is not our section. <laughs> <laughs> so we direct you somewhere else. Mm. So of course, people would probably have issues in their relationship, mm. you know, so we direct you somewhere else. So we wouldn't know if they had like disasters afterwards, mm. you know, so basically we just focus on the Bringing dating aspect. Together. Mm. So, exactly. you know, let me ask you this, when it comes to the success rate, I mean, now let's look at the success rate. You've already told us that you have more women who come to you, but the men pay more for, which is understandable. They don't like to negotiate. Premium men, please. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> high, so let's high look value. At, <laughs> high that's, value. That's what they call them. <laughs> that's what they call them now. High value. So let's talk about the success rate for you. I mean, you've been a matchmaker for like six, seven years now. Um, out of 10 couples you've match made or match made, or, yes, yeah. match yeah. made. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like that way like this. <laughs> 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 to tell us on the scale, out of 10 couples, what has the success rate for you been? Okay, so success would depend on if you mean if they got to marriage or dating. Mm. Oh, dating. Happy with them. Oh. How do you define you, success? Uh, that's yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we discuss, uh, we define success as long as you feel like through the platform you met reasonable people because people have gone to other platforms as well. And then after matching, you know, and they're like, I met four people here. I don't, um, you know, we're not, I'm not dating any of them, but I found that this is really a really good friend. I found that this one could go somewhere. You know, when they're happy with their, this thing, that's what success for us is. Mm -hmm. Once they're happy with the process, you know, there's no complaint, like all oh, the people were rubbish or something like that. That's just success to us. So for, mm -hmm. for 10 couples, what has the rate been like? Success in that way would be like nine. Wow. Yeah. Because the thing is, you get to see the profile before you even sign up. So it's really hard for you to not, you know, you can see what you're signing up for before you sign up. Mm, yeah, it's different nice. if they're telling you, you know, some matchmakers, you know, you sign up, then they start looking for someone, someone for you and all that. Right. But you can see the people signed up on the VIP and all that before you sign up. So you can say, oh, this person went to school with me. It's really mm. hard for you not to have things in common with that person. Yeah. So that just increases the rate, I think. So I just have one question, sorry. And it's just... So in your process of matchmaking, how do you exactly, like, do you say, like, oh, this person likes blue. This other person likes blue. Maybe Let's we should match blue them. Couple. <laughs> is that, is that, do you do that? Like, what is the pre preliminary things that, you know, the criteria that you use to, like, match? Just say, okay, these are possible matches. Or do then. you have, like, an app that does it? No. Everything has an app now. <laughs> yeah, no, at first we used to be the main would focus more on the matchmaking for you. Like we would do the whole process, choose, because like someone would say, I want someone younger and we feel like someone older would be good for you. Yeah. So we'll choose for you. But eventually people started saying, no, we want to choose for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we did a whole 50-50, you choose, 
we choose two and we give one to you as well. Right. You know, so we had a case when a lady said she wanted a younger guy. Mm -hmm. And it's usually not about age when people say they want someone at a particular age. Mm -hmm. She just thought older guys would be more stiff. Mm -hmm. So we decided because we had this older guy that wasn't stiff. So okay. ended up matching her with him and she was so happy. They ended up dating, you know. So okay. it's about just knowing what they're looking for, mm -hmm. you know, and just trying to go right. with that. Okay. I'm looking okay. forward to when um, Didi would have a matchmaking reality show in Nigeria. Oh. Trust me, it's going to be fire for fire. <laughs> but I've seen Didi speed dating. What's that thing? I've seen it Oh, done. dating in quarantine. Everybody, like, no, we need, to, dates. We need to hold our horses. Let me uh. just, ah, ah, I know this juice is very sweet. <laughs> well, let's go on a quick break and we'll come back. We'll still have more on Jassery. As reporters, we don't just gather news stories, we experience them daily. So join us on Report Desk Africa as we share these experiences and review the top African stories every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. West African time, only on News Central. Welcome, you're still on Jessir with us and we're talking matchmaking here in Nigeria. And of course, we have a beautiful matchmaker with us, the Lagos matchmaker. She's been giving us all the expose. So if you're a woman or man out there, you better jump on. <laughs> I want to ask, because I've seen it done many places and it's for quite exciting. There's this thing they call speed dating. Everybody's in like a restaurant and you keep circling. Like, really? you sit with this for two minutes, you get it, uh, you don't like it, you move on to the next table, and you talk, 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 you don't like this one, it looks like a serial killer, like, oh my God, <laughs> then you move on to the next person. Are there exciting things like that, so you can, like, touch and feel immediately? So Maybe the guy's profile <laughs> is slim and lanky and all nice, and he's all pot belly and gross. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay all right, okay. Oh, yeah, no, no, you made your point. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have such <laughs> yes, we used to have the speed dating. We used to have it by this water place. It was very romantic, very nice. But with the coronavirus pandemic, you know, oh. so we moved to an online version mm. called Dating in Quarantine. Mm. So we just had people come online and just speed date, you know, just over Zoom. So that kind of just helped the process. Uh, Does it feel the same Happy way? <laughs> week soon. <laughs> but does it feel the same way, the physical and the virtual? I mean, the virtual is not as good as the physical but you know considering the circumstance that we're with we had to still do okay, something so COVID is, we're managing with covid now mm -hmm. shouldn't we have a kind of version that is less people i'm even or... wondering i'm even wondering if covid has changed the industry for yeah. you through matchmaking oh yeah i did i mean like zoom and other platforms that thrived during covid mm -hmm. Matchmaking thrived as well. Mm. You know, yeah. So wow. it was, yeah, because wow. um, BBC had an interview on it and they yeah. spoke to different matchmakers, you know, including myself, talking about how matchmaking has been during this whole COVID pandemic. And so it just showed the rise because everyone was at home. People then realized that, oh, they're lonely. Yeah, yeah. I'm alone. Yeah. Yeah. So I should <laughs> be with someone. Right now, Didi, so tell us about the expectations one should have when going into this matchmaking process. And more importantly, how can people sign up? So people should be more realistic with their, you know, with their expectations. You don't have a unicorn list. Know what's important to you, what's the top of your priority. And yeah, basically that's it. And to sign up, you can just go to the website, www.lagosmatchmaker.com. It'll give you the different options that we have, which is for matchmaking and even just friendship as well. Nice. Mm, nice. Oh, there's no... I was just going to go into <laughs> signing up. All right. You know, when I when you when we said we're talking about matchmaking today, I am an expert on orthodox matchmaker. Because mm. I have matched like 12 couples in my life, working from dating to marriage. That's nice. I've yeah. done a couple of failed so ones. Have you matched yourself, yourself though? Nobody matches me. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has ever matched me. And I think that's just based on the fact that people just think, oh, uh, you can't find a man. So you can sign up on Lagos Matchmaker. She would give me free membership because I'm yeah. profiling. And she would probably, sign, she would probably and try and match me too. Yeah, you know, actually, no, 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 no. Like, totally. Nice. But that is going to take us to our Jassiri moment. And um, I have to shake our shaker for it. And I can almost 
tell you that one of us who amongst us has been matchmaked before. Tell me. Not me. Like never been. Would be, oh. Never been. There must be a Maybe culprit no, here. Maybe unofficially. I'm you know the queen amongst like, us. Like <laughs> the elite one. Ah! The one to whom? What, what, what does that even mean? The like, can you just... <laughs> The hand, the hand <laughs> movement. The you know, she was happened. just born and bred in mm. aristocracy. <laughs> Sheila. So Sheila, mm. tell us. Give us the gist. <laughs> so, yes, I have. So, interestingly, I have signed up for Lagos Matchmaker. Yay! Oh, Before yes. me? Yes, I've, I've tried. I have tried. I've tried. Um, I tend to experiment every once in a while. So, I've tried. And I've also been matchmade by, you know, friends, my mother. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> I should meet her mom. That's I just know, for right? another episode. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, um, I would say like, I, let me just say my experience with being matchmaker, like through Lagos Matchmaker for me. I think it was, it was a very good experience. It was an interesting experience getting to meet people. Oh. And then um, one of the things that I loved about the process was it was this thing of just know what you want. And so it doesn't mean that you are going to marry the person that you yeah, match with, but right. at least... You can meet people yeah, meet and people. be realistic about what you want. And so, and so because you have options to pick from, I think that was also the thing, right? Yeah. So usually when you go out on your own and then you go to the bar, wherever you go to a church, you feel like you meet one person. But then when you use a matchmaker, you have options. Options. And so then you're like, hmm, I love options. Like, which one do I that, pick from? I like what you're saying. I like, I like. <laughs> So when you see, when you go on a blind date, I like, have you ever gone on a blind date that once you see the person, shock hits you? Like, what is this? Like, um, Can I run? Well, no, so like on another, like another experience, yes, I have had an experience like that when I showed up and I'm like, yeah, this is not going to last. Mm -hmm. So, so, but we did the cordial, have conversations. Mm -hmm. So like if I meet people and I like you, I'm very chatty. Mm -hmm. If I'm not too comfortable, I'm just like, Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. Cool. Right. Nice. Nice meeting you. Take care. Bye. And that was it. There was never a conversation after that. But again, what I love about this whole experience is that you get to learn more about yourself. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And so you go back and you do a review. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things that you know they. It's it's those things that I learned you know, while working with the Lagos Matchmaker. It's that thing of what didn't you like, and it's like it's that review in yeah. your head, like. Okay, this is what it was that I did like. Right. This is a, so going into the next one, it maybe I will watch out for whatever. So the queen of matchmaking, tell us your own experience. <laughs> I know are you, it's not plausible. That's you know, that you've not been. No, I, I date a lot. Like I go and date a lot. Uh -huh. It's more, so the blind sometimes it's a research thing to me for me. You know, because <laughs> actually, all the new things that are in dating <laughs> now. So there are new terms all the time that mm -hmm. you find out. You just stop dating for one year, you come back, and there are new terms, and you're like. Ah. There's something called this, there's something called that, there's ghosting, there's catfishing, yeah, hitting fishing, catfishing, fishing, benching, breadcrumbing. Oh, there are lots. What is breadcrumbing? When someone is talking to you, but they never really take it that step further. Yeah. But every oh, day some guys like, be breadcrumbing Giving me. you breadcrumbs. <laughs> wow. I didn't know and I they're like, what it is. You're, you know, you put a picture up, they're like, oh, you're beautiful, you're good. Yeah, but it never gets to that meeting up stage. Mm -hmm. That's breadcrumbing. So they're like so many different terms. Oh my on God. On benching, when you're bench. on the bench, just in case <laughs> substitutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In case what they're in doesn't work. <laughs> Catfishing. <laughs> so that's why dating constantly helps me. I learn a lot that I can share and I'm learning about myself as well. You know, I learn a lot about myself while dating and learning what I want and what I don't want. So, mm. I have to go on dates every nice. night. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. That's really, really yeah, I'm, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm so gearing up for uh, a Lagos matchmaker experience. So, yeah, watch sure. out. So, so, I have yeah. a lot of friends that would really, really want to sign up. So, I think I'll tell them to. Yeah, so <laughs> definitely. So, like like she said before, if you want to sign up, it's www.lagosmatchmaker.com dot com and so now we're going straight into our eye candy section again mm. it's not that kind of eye candy i know you ladies what you're thinking it's our <laughs> famous or nice quotes that we find and we find that very interesting so i found one from the great oprah winfrey oh. yes that we all want to be like you know have her money mm. um, yes so, <laughs> so i have a quote from oprah winfrey and it says you will be wounded many times in your life You'll make mistakes. Some people will call them failures, but I have learned that failure is really God's way of saying, excuse me, 
you're moving in the wrong direction. It's just an experience, just an experience. Um, I personally love that quote. Mm. There's a lot of times we're brought up to fear failure mm. and failure actually makes us who we are. It shapes us into, you know, the individuals that we are today. And so I've had my fair share of failures, you know, once in a while in life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in a way, it has actually changed me. So it's it's an experience, but it has also changed me and made me a better person, actually. At that moment, it doesn't feel that way. But then eventually, when you look back, you're like, okay, yeah, it's a good thing that happened. So I don't know, Lola, what do you think? Uh, for me, failure is part of life. Mm -hmm. It's just like telling me the nuances of life, the creation. Everything has ups and it has downs. That shows you that I don't think God himself wanted us to play life on a plane. Mm -hmm. So every time I'm faced with an obstacle, I hardly call them problems. I just say a challenge. That means I haven't found a way to get through it. So, but if you focus hard enough, you're going to understand that you can go around it, you can go over it, and you can actually go through it. Mm -hmm. And everything you're doing, you're getting better, you're getting stronger. If you scale a mountain, your muscles are better. If you go around it, you you build stamina. Mm -hmm. If you bore through it, you're just resilient. You're like indestructible. So every single thing that life throws at you has a unique lesson. Learn it and don't just be to uh, don't focus on yourself too much. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. For me, failure has brought about creativity. Mm. I, I like mean, that. creativity yeah. because it's at the deepest moment, at the deepest times yeah. where we try to bring ourselves up, we, real we realize that there are different ways we need to bring ourselves up. Because it's okay to fall down, it's okay yeah. to fail, mm. but it's not okay to stay in stay that state there. forever. Mm. So for me, failure brings about creativity. Mm. And, and when I fail the first time, the first thing that comes to your head is, oh, I'm not good enough, or I didn't put in my best. Rather, you think of other ways to say, oh, probably this is just a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. I need to change the way I've gone about it, which is where creativity comes in. So failure, mm -hmm. creativity. Wow. Nice. Yeah, um, like people look at relationships like that don't work as failures too. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I put a post up, you know, saying that your past relationship was probably just not meant to work out, but was meant to redesign you into the person you are now, you know, in preparation for your new relationship. So it's asking people like, what did you learn from your past relationship? You know, so your past relationship didn't work out, but you definitely learned something mm -hmm. that made you a better version of yourself. You know, so I had a friend that her past relationship just taught her the things she didn't want in a guy. Mm -hmm. And that prepared her for the next, next person she one. met. She said if she was that same person she was before and she met this new guy, it wouldn't have worked what? out. Wow. Right. Mm. Wow. Wow. Different perspectives to the same thing we have just read from Icon. <laughs> and that's from Oprah Winfrey. That's from Oprah. Mm -hmm. Oprah. <laughs> mm, nice. And that's all the time we have on Jassy today. I'm sure you had a lot of fun. But as always, at the end of the show, we say be, be bold, be strong, be a Jassy woman. woman. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>